Hi folks, the purpose of this uh, tutorial, video tutorial, is to show you how to use the quasi-static uh, step in the uh, 3D Experiences uh, Finite Element Solver release 2022X. Uh, in, in a few minutes, I'll show you why this uh, quasi-static can also be referred to as transient static analysis. Uh, the purpose of these video tutorials is to uh, provide a, a platform for the people who want to use 3D experience uh, as a novice or uh, Abacus users, Abacus CAE users who want to s switch to or actually maybe use in parallel the 3D experience native FEA solver uh, to assist them in, in getting, get, getting to where, where they want to go. Now, I want to remind you also that uh, uh, the, the FEA solver in the 3D experience uh, is actually the stripped down version of the Abacus standard program. Okay? However, the icons are different, the, some of the functionalities are different, and therefore uh, it takes some detective work in order for an Abacus user to switch and use the 3D experience solver. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the procedures, the, the steps that can be done in 3D experience are listed here. Some of these already we have prepared uh, uh, video tutorials for. The one that we are interested in right now is this quasi-static uh, step, okay? Now, there is some online, uh, online help uh, for, uh, you know, the, uh, the solver in the 3, 3DX and uh, I've, I've picked some of them here. For example, it says quasi-static analysis uh, is uh, when the inertia effect is neglected, so there is no mass transit acceleration, there's no mass matrix there. However, the material properties are time dependent. So if you're doing, doing a viscoelastic creep or swelling problem, although there is no acceleration there, uh, there's no inertia force there, there's no mass transit acceleration basically, uh, however, the material properties are uh, material properties are time dependent, and therefore this cannot be solved as a static problem. Okay, it has to be done with a quasi-static problem. Uh, here is some more more information. By the way, anything that uh, can be done with this icon here can also be done as a, a, a dynamic uh, a dynamic problem. Uh, uh, for example, explicit dynamic problem but you have to use the proper mass scaling and uh, load, load rate uh, reduction in order to make it actually work, okay? Uh, viscoelastic material properties are always ignored in static analysis, but not in quasi-static analysis. Okay, uh, there's some more information if you wanna look at it. And uh, the particular problem that I'm gonna be doing is the work of this, uh, this gentleman. Uh, and uh, can be found in that link. Uh, there's some modifications uh, there. The problem that uh, is being looked at in this video tutorial, the one up there, is uh, a, a, a bar that's under, uh, under tension, this and this clamp, dimensions are given here, and this bar, uh, because it's made of viscoelastic material, can be approximated or represented by a spring and a damper in, in uh, series. And that's called, this is what is called the Maxwell model, okay? We're gonna do the analysis of this after 150 seconds. The properties are given here. Uh, now, this cannot be directly inputted, you know, directly inputted in, uh, in uh, the material database for uh, 3DEX. Uh, density in this tutorial, the tutorial that I'm using referring to is also given, but I don't need it. We don't need it here because we're solving as a quasi-static problem. Density is not important. There's no mass matrix involved there, okay? And Poisson ratio is also specified in this fellow's work, but it's fairly insensitive in this particular problem. It's very insensitive to this. I mean, it, it could be that in other situations that may not be the case, but now the difference between uh, what uh, I do and this, uh, what uh, this fellow has done, this gentleman has done, is that I will uh, assume that the, 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 the bar is actually pulled on both sides and uh, uh, because of that, there's a symmetry. I'm not gonna clamp it. Because of that, there's this, the three planes of symmetry here. So all I have to do is to model one eighth 
of this model, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, now, what goes into the uh, 3D experience material database is not ADA. Obviously, you have to put it in A there and U, uh, but uh, ADA is not going to go there directly. So there are these things called Prony series uh, uh, approximation or Prony series representation of the linear viscoelastic uh, model and uh, GK and ADA because there's a single a uh, single thing like that here. There's one G, one K, and one eta. Uh, but if there is, if this is approximated with uh, multiple configurations like that in parallel, then of course for every one of them you have a G, K, and eta. Uh, now, in in both in uh, 3D experience and abacus, you cannot put a one here. There's going to be some issues, so this, you can you can use something very close to one. Now, uh, the particular problem can be solved analytically with Maxwell model. So this is our applied applied uh, stress. Think about it like that. Instantaneously applied. This is a differential equation. It can be solved analytically. Very simple first order differential equation. And the solution to the strain is going to be a sudden jump followed by a linear uh, linear rise. Okay. Now this eta is, or, or theta is uh, uh, called uh, Thing is called the uh, can't remember the name of it, but things relaxation parameter or something like that. It is, it, it's unit of time, okay? Uh, it's uh, eta over e, and it's going to be 13.29 seconds. Now, if you take this and you plug plug that stuff in here, you're going to get the strain after 150 seconds, and uh, it should come out to be this value of uh, strain. In other words. Uh, 0 0.00326 uh, millimeter per millimeter or meter per meter. Now, uh, here's the situation as far as the interlinked data is concerned. Notice that I don't have any uh, anything under density. Density goes in this is general general option. I don't have the density specified. I put the Young's modulus here, Poisson ratio there. Make sure this radio button is checked. So this is uh, uh, for uh, viscoelastic problem. You have to check this radio button. Now, uh, they, they remember the pro, pro, prony, uh, prony uh, uh, series, uh, series is going to be given as G, K, eta for every uh, single representation of mass, uh, not mass, uh, uh, spring and damper in series. So I have a single one, so there's just these three numbers. If you had multiple of these in parallel, then for every row, you've got to, you've got to supply that information. Please check that video that I referred to. It's very, very good. And make sure that the, this time is selected because on default, it, this is selected, but uh, we're doing this elastic problem in the time series, uh, in the time domain, and therefore I'm going to check time here, not frequency, time, okay? And, uh, yep, so I'm going to do it for 150 seconds. We start with uh, a one second initial time increment. Uh, can build it up to 10 seconds. I'll put some restriction in it, and then uh, obviously I don't want it to go below this, this value. Uh, so these are things that can be played with. And here, uh, maximum creep strain rate increment, if you put a zero, it's fairly insensitive to, to this number because uh, my guess is that it doesn't directly come into the pic uh, picture. But uh, uh, if you put a zero here, it's going to bomb out, okay? But it's fairly insensitive to other values of uh, of uh, this this number that you put in there. And I also uncheck the geometric nonlinearity uh, inclusion of geometric nonlinearity because the prob the present problem is small deformation, therefore no no big deal. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our model one eighth of that. Remember, so on that plane, I will sketch a square, which is uh, half a centimeter by half a centimeter. So this is going to be uh, five millimeter, and this is also going to be five millimeter. Exit. Okay, and let's uh, pad it. By uh, five five centimeters. Five or fifty millimeters. 
So there's my model. This is one eighth of that block that you see there, you saw there. Uh, let's apply our material properties to this. Incidentally, let me change the name of this to Visco uh, properties. This is just in case I want to look for it tomorrow. At least I know what to look for. I don't want these numbers. So Visco elasticity. Uh, how about this video? Okay. Good. And save. Now we're going to create our material. Uh, material. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, tools. Add the add the material. Create material. I'm going to call it uh, uh, visco elasticity uh, video video material okay so it's going to create a temporary blank or, or placeholder right here uh, visco elasticity video material right click uh, apply we don't need this we're going to apply it to that and use the green check mark now we can go and input your stuff so we go there okay so uh, on the structure uh, notice that density if you want to put it it's on the general option i don't i'm not going to specify the density because solving as a visco elastic uh, sorry quasi static problem so abacus multi physics mechanical elasticity elastic okay so this thing was 376 376 uh, e to the e to the 8 actually I can't remember what was it uh, 376 e to the 6 okay e to the 6. Poisson ratio, I will use uh, point zero point three two five, but as I said, it doesn't matter in this particular program. Make sure you check this instantaneous radio, instantaneous radio button, okay? Not long term, instantaneous. And then you go to visco, visco elasticity, visco elastic, select it, make sure the time radio button is selected, and this is where you input your uh, pony, uh, prone, not pony. Crony series uh, uh, number. So G 0 0.999, 0 0.999, K is 0 0.999, and tau was 13. Okay, and G uh, and tau of 13.26, obviously, second. So uh, we close this. Uh, we now go to the structural model creation. That's where the machine is going to take, take place. So uh, we will use a standard. Uh, now I'm going to use a linear or first uh, first order uh, first order element linear elements, and uh, it's going to be a swept mesh. Okay, this is fairly uh, suitable for swept mesh, uh, you know, uh, situation and the uh, mesh size of five millimeter. And I'll put down two layers here, and I'll show you what it means. One thing uh, I have to do is select the geometry. Notice that up here, you have to select the geometry right there. So I select this, and then say, uh, OK. You will see the effect of uh, this number of layers in a minute. OK, so if you want to see your mesh, actually, you do an update here. you see it right there. OK, so uh, f uh, first of all, the the two layer means that there's two things in this in this direction. I don't want that. I want one. So uh, double click on this. Double click on swept 3D. Make this thing one. And uh, okay. Let's let me update. So there we are. So this is the kind of uh, mesh that I would like to have. This problem actually can be done with maybe one single you know element to with the length direction, but I broke it down into uh, more and first order. 
Okay, so that takes care of this. So let's uh, actually save this thing. We are now going to go to this uh, structural scenario creation, scenario creation. Okay. We will uh, select for uh, for the uh, for the finite element model. Select the one that you just created. We say okay. Okay. Uh, so if you click on the procedures, you see that these are the options that you've got. You want to do quasi-static right there. See that quasi-static? You click on it, and let's do the uh, things that I said. 150 seconds. 150 seconds. We start with one second uh, uh, time. Don't go below one e to the minus five, and we can go up to maximum of 10 seconds for increasing the time. And this number, as I said, is uh, cannot be zero, but it can be anything. Uh, uh, pretty much anything in this particular problem. So uh, I'll use one, okay? I'll use one. Now, also uncheck the uh, include geometric nonlinearity. There's no reason to do that because this is a small deformation problem. So uh, uh, I think we've got everything working here. So we say all right. Notice that these are both green check marks now. So as for uh, the uh, restraints, I'm going to use uh, planes of symmetry or, or roll, uh, roller support, basically. So we have to do this thing three times. So this is one. This is on roller. Can't do it uh, together at the same time. So this is the second one. And finally, the bottom of this, I'm going to put it on roller. There are three planes of symmetry in this particular problem. Try it again. That's awkward. So let me see for a second. Something is blocking. You know what? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the mesh. So uh, let's see now. So we go to Feature Manager. Sorry, not Feature Manager. Uh, let's see now, visibility manager. Let's un, uh, hide the finite element model. Awkward. So, uh, visibility manager. Actually, you know, let me do it from here. Let me hide the hide, hide the L hide the hide the, the nodes and elements so another plane of symmetry right there i'm not sure it worked on the other ones it doesn't work on this it didn't work on that so what i did i, I hit the nodes and elements and then uh use the same icon that you see down here now as far as the load goes uh, the load according to this problem is uh, uh 10 newton on that entire area entire area is one centimeter by one centimeter so the pressure there is going to be uh, 10 divided by that area, which is going to be 100,000 Pascal. Uh, and it doesn't matter that I took one quarter of this, uh, this because I'm applying pressure, okay? So we go here, uh, apply load uh, pressure on that face, negative, negative 100,000. Uh, right, that's... Okay, good. All right, so let me also change the name of this, uh, make it in case I want to find it later on. So we go visco elasticity video. All right. Uh, that's uh, pretty much it. So uh, what I would also do when you go to simulate, I'll ask for some information to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, provided to me uh, beyond the default ones. And one of them is uh, stress all components if I need it. 
But the main thing that I need is actually strain all components. So E total component at every uh, at every increment and of course uh, uh, fill data because I want to be able to plot the contours if I wanted to. I mean the contours are fairly straightforward here. They're just the same color. It's a uniaxial problem. Uh, but anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, do a model and sim model check. In case there are any obvious errors, they may pop up here. And then the, okay, so this one is, the uh, first one is called model check. This is, I think, called scenario check. Is that right? Simulation check, yeah. So say okay. Let me say a few words. You cannot do this problem with a static step because material properties are time dependent. You can solve it with implicit dynamics. However, we did not specify the density here and it's not gonna work unless you specify the density, okay? We are not solving it with dynamics. We are solving it with quasi-static. That's why I did not need the, uh, uh, the density, however, material, time dependent material can be simulated. And finally, we're gonna run it here, okay? Wait a minute. This is gonna be fast. Start with one, uh, one second time increment because that was the initial time that I suggested and it's gonna add to it, uh, uh, increase it quite a bit. Okay, while this is gonna be running, while it's running, uh, I wanna remind you that the way we're gonna check our correct, uh, correct, the correctness of the result is to check it against this theoretical value. Uh, so at, 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 at the end of the 150 seconds, we should get a strain of 0 0.00326 in the direction one. One meaning the uh, direction of the loading axis, which is in this case Z, of course. So we're gonna be plotting, we're gonna be checking E33, right? Yeah, it, it ran. Okay, finished. This is the first step, and it's one Mises. Nothing, uh, nothing, uh, you know, uh, magic here at all. The step, the one Mises stress is going to be uh, 100,000. No big deal. The displacements are going to be different, though. For example, you can see that initially zero displacement, then displacement builds up because you're stretching it, right? And the stretch is gonna go, the displacement is gonna go down here, okay? Now, uh, I, uh, yeah. So I wanna plot, I wanna plot the, uh, plot the uh, uh, strain in the direction of the loading, which is E33 here, as a function of time, and I should be getting something like that. So uh, that is done with, uh, you go to plots, you go to uh, XY plot from history, oh, not history, sorry, close, uh, XY plot from, uh, wait a minute, from field, right, XY plot from field, okay, let me move this thing here. Okay, so what do we want here? We want, not the translation, we want the strain. And at what node, at for example, this top node? Yeah, node one or any of these other nodes. They're gonna be the same. And we want not uh, anything, but we want the tensor component 3.3, which is uh, strain in the direction of the loading. And then you say apply. And there we are. And notice that the uh, notice that the uh, at 150 second, the value of the stress uh, strain is roughly 0 0.00333, which is in agreement with uh, uh, the the uh, 
this okay so uh, that's uh, pretty much it uh, yeah just in case you know, let's also plot the stress although uh, okay let's also just plot the stress too in that direction not a big deal so you should, stress should be uh, well let's say as a function of time should be constant right so uh, uh, not the strain but the stress stress component same node and uh, direction seems to be just a constant you know that because you apply hundred thousand it's going to be a hundred thousand that's it good luck